Welcome to Always Analog, where we celebrate the beauty of analog technology in the digital world. Today we're going to look at a typewriter. Uh, this is a Remington Super Writer, and writer is spelled R-I-T-E-R. Uh, and I thought uh, this would be a nice comparison to the Remington Quiet Writer, which is a portable that I featured a couple weeks ago. And uh, this typewriter would have been out uh, on the market about the same time as that Quiet Writer. Our friends at the Typewriter database tell me that by the serial number, this typewriter was manufactured in 1952. So it is 70 years young this year. How cool is that? And I think it looks pretty darn good for 70. So um, let's take a look at the typewriter here. Uh, and let's start with just sort of the front. And the typewriter is I'm coming a little bit closer. Uh, sort of this grayish brown matte finish um, and these typewriters were fairly common. They were purchased I think in fairly large quantities by offices and governmental agencies. They're workhorses. They really are. And I, uh, I, some might say they're not as stylized as some other of the uh, manuals, uh, standard desk manual typewriters of this era, but um, this was Remington's version uh, in 1952 uh, and its offering for a standard desk machine. So uh, let's turn, let's get a little look at the body here. So there's a side view of it. Uh, note the really curved and elongated carriage return finger lever, which I actually like. Uh, while some manufacturers had their levers turn up, Others had it turned down. Um, so this one was a downturn. And you can see the shape of it. Um, kind of the Quiet Writer that was featured a couple weeks ago sort of mimics this. Smaller in scale, lo much lower profile, of course, because it's a portable. But basically, you kind of had this sort of bulbous center, uh, very curved, uh, very rounded center with the kind of keyboard extension that you see on the right. Um, and then here, a back cover. Keep flipping it. There we go. Remington Rand. Super Writer, made in USA. Not sure if that's coming into focus or not. Um, and then here's our other side. Whoop. So that's the shape of this machine. Um, let me see if I can roll this up a little bit and see if we can take a closer look um, at the keyboard on this 1952 Super Writer because there are some interesting things to point out on this particular keyboard. Come in a little bit. Um, 
Let's see if I can focus in. There we go. So, uh, for the most part, your standard keyboard. But things to note here. One, it's got these wonderful green keys uh, with a it's kind of a circular indentation in them. So they're they're these these keys are sort of semi-square, straight at the top, curved at the bottom, and indented through the center of the key. And they're fairly comfortable keys to type with. One thing I appreciated on the Remingtons of this era are the both the backspace key, which is right here, and the margin release key here are large. Often they are the same size as a letter key, but they gave them a little extra width uh, and frankly makes them a little bit easier to use. Of course you have your shift and your shift lock on either side. Space bar. This is the tab bar. Look at the size of it. It is really the same width as your space bar. Very easy to hit with either hand and any finger, which is nice. On either side of the tab bar, you have your tab clear and your tab set. This is an interesting feature on these Remingtons. KR stands for key release. So what that means is if you ever have a little jam up, say you've depressed, uh, you're typing furiously and you've depressed a couple of keys. See if I can do it. There we go. And they're stuck where the slugs come together. You just hit this key release button and it'll push them back down. So that's sort of a nice feature. And then here in this corner, you see KMC, Keyboard Margin Control. So Remington got itself into a little bit of trouble earlier on with their margin control mechanism. Uh, they did sort of an automatic touch margin, not unlike Royal's magic margin control, and so not unlike Ma uh, Royal's control that I believe Royal filed a lawsuit and won. And so Remington uh, could no longer use that system on their typewriters, although they did have it for a few years. Uh, I think the generation before these. But the keyboard margin, ma uh, keyboard margin control works this way. Let me see. My right margin is at 80. If I want to change it, I will depress the keyboard margin control and I'm going to change it to 70 and I'll release it. And that's now my margin. It works equally the same on the right margin, which is now set at 3. And we said, no, we're going to set that at 10. And now we're set at 10. So one button to set either margin. So fairly convenient. Not a magic margin, but but uh, not complicated. And then over here we have a few levers on the front panel. This is your touch control. Depending on you want a lighter, moderate, 
or heavy touch. This is your ribbon reverse button right there. And then here is our ribbon selector button. And Remington gives us four options. We have, uh, might not show up, there's a blue dot on top for black. There's a white dot for stenciling. There is a white line which means right in the middle of the ribbon and then there's a, a red dot for the red or the bottom part of the ribbon. So what Remington did was they put a vibrator setting for the ribbon one that would allow you to use the center of the ribbon. Now, well, maybe you wouldn't want a half black, half red imprint, but for people like me who really don't use a red ribbon and don't buy a black and red ribbon, I get an all black ribbon. So what this allows me to do is I can use this ribbon on the top setting and run it through a couple of cycles and then I can move it to the middle setting and it will start hitting the middle of the ribbon and then I can start put it on red and use the bottom of the ribbon. So really it allows you when you're using an all black ribbon to use all of it. Top, middle, bottom. Uh, and get a little further life out of the ribbon. I think it's a nice feature. Um, while we're up here, let's uh, take the cover off. Just pulls back. And you can see access to the ribbon spools and the type slugs for cleaning. Uh, fairly open and a fairly simple ribbon pattern. Remington had these uh, metal spools and they had this circular indentation here which was ideal for spinning the ribbon around with your finger. Um, and it just sort of slides back on. We'll come in here and take a look at some of the features on the carriage. I always thought Remington was a little steampunkish. They didn't go um, make any great effort to hide a lot of the mechanics as some of the other manufacturers did would put caps and covers around some of this stuff so that you couldn't see it. Remington let it all hang out. Um, and we'll start here. You can see very simple one, two, three. This is your space selector, single, double, triple space. There are, there's one of these on either side of the carriage, your carriage release. This is your platen release lever, so you can disengage the platen to adjust uh, for doing forms and things like that. Nice feature. You also have a release here that you can depress and turn and that will also change the placement of the platen. Uh, on the back you have your paper guide, of course our paper bale, and then over on this side you have 
your paper release lever to disengage, pull your paper out, your um, carriage release. This this unlocks the um, platen. The platen lifts out from the right side. And so if you wanted to take the platen out to clean it or to clean under it, the feed rollers and things like that, very easy to do. I will say Remington really did give pretty good access there. So um, these are, I just, these are little card holders here. Um, let me see. I don't know if I showed those. I don't think I did, but that's just how they, they've got a little lever here, and those will fold out of the way if you don't need them or don't want them up. So there's the Quiet Writer. Overall, let's put some paper in it and do a little typing. So, here we are, typing on the Remington Super Writer. Um, it is a, a good, solid typing machine. Um, I find that uh, it overall um, is not as um, snappy, uh, I guess is the right word, for uh, as some of the other machines. Um, uh, it has a very different feel than a Royal uh, or an Underwood. But um, uh, to me, it does require a little bit more of a firm um, kind of uh, touch. But um, it is a machine that uh, really um, you can you can really use it a lot. It really holds up. It's not it's not a fragile machine uh, in that sense. Uh, and I think this is perhaps one of the reasons why this machine, let's take a little bit, a little look at the keyboard here, perhaps was uh, popular. Popular option for many offices. Um, the Remington Super Writer from 1952. So if you do a lot of typing uh, or you want to, um, these machines are not uh, the what's happened to the the typewriter market is kind of crazy um, but I think these machines are not uh, as necessarily as sought after as many of the others and uh, if you can find one of these um, uh, and you can either get it cleaned up or reconditioned you'll have a good solid typewriter on your hands so thank you for being a part of uh, always analog for watching and if you like what I do here please share like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you again real soon right here on Always Analog.